So yesterday I opened up a can of worms by starting to speak about NFT staking and my experience that I had staking my NFTs for over two years. Also, I teased that I was going to dive into differentiating between staking cryptocurrencies and staking NFTs because truthfully, they have very little in common. So we're going to dive into that today. Hello, I'm Taj, digitally known as Tropic Vibes, the host of Nifty Business, where we highlight NFTs and explore Web 3.0 as we move from pure speculation to creating real world value. So yesterday, I was pretty critical about NFT staking. However, there are some cases where it actually does work, but they're very few and far in between. Now, the same kind of thing happens over with cryptocurrencies. And as I said, they really have nothing in common. But we're going to use some general overviews, just explaining how crypto staking works, why, what the purpose is of it, and then in contrast, what the purpose is for NFT staking. Well, usually, crypto staking is to help to secure the blockchain and the success of that particular coin. And that's most evident when it comes to BNB, ETH, Solana, and Cardano. But there are many tokens that also offer staking without having their own blockchain. So for example, the ApeCoin is an Ethereum-based token. However, Yuga Labs does offer staking for that. So there's a wide variety of this as to why it is. But the ones I'm going to start with most simple, most popular is how Ethereum does their staking of ETH. The main purpose for staking ETH is because in theory, if the validators and the people that are processing all these transactions have a lot of ETH staked, they're invested into the success of that blockchain. So they're not going to process fraudulent transactions and do all sorts of shenanigans that's going to help to give someone some sort of financial advantage because if you have a large stake in the matter, well, by doing that, you're going to also exploit yourself. So whatever it is that you do to get more stake within the amount of tokens that are outstanding, well, you're also going to do that at a detriment to your own bag. So really, there is less incentive for people with large stakes to commit some sort of fraud for financial gain because it's not going to work out in their favor. So that's the whole theory of staking and proof of stake networks. So when it comes to BNB and ETH, tokens are locked up and as transactions are going through, those that are helping to secure the future of the network are then paid a percentage of those fees. Now, things are a little bit different over on Solana, ADA, and then with the ApeCoin because those staking rewards are actually not paid out of the fees that are being processed on that blockchain, especially with ApeCoin since it's running on Ethereum. Those staking rewards are actually paid out by inflation. And you might be wondering, well, what does that exactly mean? Inflation occurs when more tokens are printed or more tokens are created and put onto the blockchain. And most cryptocurrencies have some sort of inflation. So for example, the OG Bitcoin has a maximum supply of 21 million. Each year, more Bitcoin are created until they get to that maximum supply. So although Bitcoin is not a proof of state network, that is a proof of work network. I'm just using it as an example to understand how inflation works because that is by far the easiest way to do it because that is a fixed supply. So when Solana, ADA, and ApeCoin are paying their stakers rewards, new tokens are actually being created. So in theory, those aren't real yields. People that have their tokens staked are just maintaining their actual value. So in other words, the people that have their tokens staked aren't actually gaining value. The people that don't have their tokens staked are losing value. And I'm not going to go into all the complexities of this, but just think of a pizza pie. You order a large pizza for a kid's birthday party and you realize that most of them are not going to have full slices. And by the way, I'm speaking about New York pizzas. If you're getting Domino's pizzas or you're getting Pizza Hut or something of that nature, those slices are very small. But you get a large pizza pie from a New York pizzeria. Those are huge. Some of them could literally feed families of six. So if you're in a place that you don't know what a large pie is or you don't even call pizzas pies, then this might not work for you. But just bear with me. Just pretend that you're a New Yorker and you have large pizzas. So going back to the analogy, that large pie comes and you realize that there are more kids at this party than you expected. However, you only have the one pizza. So you decide to cut all of the slices in half. So that eight slice pizza is now 16 slices. So although there's more slices, the amount of pizza is still the same. And that's sort of how inflation works. Although there's more tokens created, the total value of everything basically stays the same. In order to fill your stomach, you're going to need more slices. And if you want to go to finance, a better comparison would be when there's a stock split. So let's just say Apple, Google, Tesla, one of these big companies, their share price is $1,000. And they decide to do a 10 for one split, meaning that for every share that the shareholder holds, they're going to get back 10 shares of a stock valued at 100. 
So yesterday, I only had one share valued at 1,000, but tomorrow, I will have 10 shares valued at 100 each, still for a total of 1,000. So each individual share actually has less market value or less power on the market. Now, my finance heavy people are probably listening to this and say, well, usually when there is a stock split, the market tends to respond by the price going up slightly. Yes, that is true. However, that is more so based on people's excitement for that particular stock. And there's no rational reason as to why that happens because the math works out to be the same. However, for the simplicity of this example, I'm just going to say is that, that the value stays the same, the number of shares go up. Well, that's exactly what happens when there is staking. So if you have those $1,000 worth of tokens staked, well, when new ones are issued, each individual one is worth less. So you might be wondering, well, that sounds like an absolutely terrible thing. Why would anyone even sign up for something like that? Well, here's the thing. In theory, how that works is that as more tokens come onto the supply, they're going to eventually, hopefully, hit a max supply. And that's built in, such as with Bitcoin, BNB has it, Solana has it, ApeCoin has it. However, even Cardano actually don't have a fixed supply, but that is a topic in itself. But of that, the two that are actually producing real yields, meaning that there actually is something that goes beyond the inflation, at this point in time is BNB and ETH. Reason being, BNB already hit its max supply. And ETH, although it doesn't have a max supply, post-merge, supply basically is in an equilibrium state, meaning that the number of tokens being burnt in transaction fees is nearly identical to the number of tokens that are being created. So although it doesn't have a hard number, there also isn't inflation. And in fact, it's slightly deflationary, meaning that a little bit more is being burned than created. So in theory, each one goes up in value. But whether these returns are being generated by the fees on the blockchain or via inflation, someone is being rewarded for locking up their tokens for a period of time. And by doing so, it also helps the price to rise because the less tokens that are on the market being swapped out for other tokens will push up the price because the laws of supply and demand, higher demand, lower supply equals higher prices. So if all of those people unstaked and put them on the open market and say switch them out for a stable coin or another cryptocurrency, the price of that token would fall. So staking those coins does two things. Number one, giving the staker the joint interest in the success of that blockchain but also rewarding them financially for doing so. And that is as deep as I'm going to go in that. So going back to NFT staking now, the example that I gave yesterday with our planet and how that worked, what was the value that was being secured? Truthfully, there was none. Our planet let a whole bunch of different collections onto the platform. They dubbed them, I guess, worthy of staking, if you will. And as they were in the platform, they were just generating those tokens. Nothing was being secured. However, those R Planet tokens that were being generated called Aether, not to be confused with Ether, Ethereum's native token, but they, for whatever reason, created Aether token spelt with an A. I guess they thought it wouldn't really matter since they're over on the LAX blockchain, but I don't know. I wish they had named it something else, but that's neither here nor there. So these generated tokens that are given out for rewards really have no purpose outside of the ecosystem of the game. So either A, you're going to buy in-game NFTs, lands, and so forth, or you're going to swap them out for another token, such as WAX. And that is exactly what I did to get my 21 cents. So in case you're wondering, well, this does not sound like a good system at all. Well, that is usually why the majority of NFT staking platforms fail. So the only projects that I've seen implement this correctly did is something like how the Bulls and Apes projects have done it. They're not the only one, but they generally follow the same blueprint. Number one, they have an asset that people want. Number two, they generate a community token. So those holders within that community value that specific token for whatever reason it is, whether it's playing in a game, swapping with each other for NFTs, or whatever it is. I've even seen community members swap services for community tokens. This is what was happening in Fanzo's Discord with his rally-based ADHD token. Also, what happens with Draft Towers over in Club Gary, this is a community token. And it has value within that ecosystem. So when an NFT staking platform is built specifically for that community and it generates this community token, that can actually work. And usually when it is the most successful is there's no liquidity pool. And if you're not familiar with what a liquidity pool is, just think of it this way. It is a pot of funds in a desirable currency such as Ether, USDC, Tether, or another currency that is very popular that can be exchanged for these community tokens. 
And the reason why that is very crucial is because when there is a liquidity pool, usually what ends up happening is as more and more tokens are generated and there's huge inflation, eventually there is a run on that pot, if you will. People are going to convert out and then withdraw their funds. And then the whole thing comes crumbling down. However, when those tokens have native utility and are not able to be drawn out from some sort of liquidity pool, there is lasting appeal. And going back to the example of the Bulls and Apes project, there is no liquidity pool. Any sort of swapping or liquidity that is provided is actually not from the project itself. Those are community members that set up their own pool. The token itself is generated by holding the NFTs and they can be used to get other NFTs and other perks within the system. Otherwise, this NFT staking platform is very similar to these meme coins, just waiting to collapse. So does NFT staking actually work? As I just explained, in majority of cases, no, it doesn't because it's creating a coin out of thin air that's really not valued. And as soon as people start to convert that out for something that has real value to them, usually everything collapses. And this is very similar to a meme coin. However, if there is real utility within there, there is a possibility of it working. But unlike staking cryptocurrencies, there is no goal of securing a network. There is no joint venture or vested interest within the success of that project. While the word staking is used in both cases, the two examples have very little in common. So if you come across any kind of project that has some sort of staking, the good thing to ask and try to figure out is, well, what's the point of the staking? What is being created? And how does this benefit the ecosystem as a whole? Because a lot of people were creating these staking platforms and mechanisms simply because people wanted them. It was the hot thing, it was in demand, and it seemed like if you were coming out with a token or some sort of NFT project and you weren't offering some form of staking that you weren't doing anything. So those projects were just rolling these half-baked ideas out and they were offering staking because the community was demanding it. But what they quickly found out is that tokens that were created with no real purpose or utility would crash to zero as people realized that they weren't valued and in high demand. So I think that is a good place to stop it. I don't wanna go too deep on this topic. I know this one's a little bit more technical than usual going into all that stuff. And if you are a staking expert and you know all the ins and outs about setting up validator nodes and all of that stuff, please excuse my oversimplification of it. This is a topic that you could easily go hours and hours and hours. I just tried to condense it down as much as possible and give it some real world examples that we're familiar with, such as the pizza slices. So hopefully you found that interesting. And if you did, I would greatly appreciate a review on whatever platform that you are listening to this on, especially if it is Apple Podcast. It really helps out the show. But as usual, I just want to thank you for taking time to listen to this as we're learning and building Web3 together. So until next time, later. The Nifty Business Show is not investment advice. It provides insights and information within the space. As with anything, please do your own research before making a decision whether you're making an investment or a purchase.